But you know, one thing that really inspired me, and now I wanna, I wanna ask you more about this. You know that 80 year old yes. man that you said did yes. Tai Chi and that essentially whooped your butt? Yes. Yes. Okay, is he still around today or is he? I don't know, I haven't seen him in over a decade. So I don't know if he's still alive. Um, if, if anybody's watching this and they are in China, he lived in Jiangsu province in the city of Zhenjiang. And, and if you know where the vinegar factory is, there's a famous vinegar brand, uh, Zhenjiang vinegar, it's known all over China. But he would train right next to the factory at a plaza right there. And he would train there every morning at 7 a.m. The man was named Wu Dao Shui. I don't know if that's a nickname or if that was his actual gift because uh, the translation is literally fish follows water. And mm -hmm. I think it might be a nickname because that, that's kind of how he moved. Because he stood in a parallel stance when I sparred with him. He, he stood in a parallel stance and I thought, this is really weird. He had his hands down by his side. And at first, I, I just tried to grapple with him, you know, like, uh, you know, he's old, he's, he's much smaller than me, so, so I'll, you know, do that thing that, um, you know, we were talking about with Mifune students, you know, mm -hmm. being respect to the older gentleman, basically. But as soon as I touched him, he grabbed my hand and he wrist locked me and, and throws me on the ground. And I get up, I'm like, ow, that really hurt. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to get an underhook on this guy. And then he won't be able to do that. And so, you know, he's just standing there in his parallel stance and I start reaching for the underhook. And as soon as my, I make physical contact with me, he throws me like a hip toss. And I get up again, I'm like, because we're not training on mats, we're training like on a, a plaza with stone tiles. And I banged up my elbow pretty badly. And I get up and he's like, come on, this time again with power. And so, you know, I, I go at him and I'm still just grappling and, and, you know, he throws me on the floor several different ways and sweeps me and does like a snap down and, and trips me. And, and um, you know, they're, they're wrestling moves, like basic wrestling moves you'll see in freestyle wrestling, Greco-Roman wrestling, you know, um, joint locks you'll see in jujitsu and judo and like movements, nothing really surprised me like, oh, here's some magic move I've never heard of before. Um, until he said, all right, for real, fight me, punch, kick, do that UFC stuff. I was like, all right, old man's not playing around. Let's, let's see what he has. And so I start punching at him and he's still standing in the parallel stance. And then he starts slipping and bobbing and weaving. And I'm like, that's Tai Chi. What the heck? And he's bobbing and weaving and slipping as I'm trying to punch him, and then he comes up under and he grabs me again and puts me on the ground. And like everything he's doing is grappling. Like everything he's doing is grappling, like stuff you would see, like high-level judo, high-level jiu-jitsu. And, um, and it's shocking to me, one, because like in popular culture, Tai Chi is always presented as like this fancy looking, striking art. Like, um, if you play any video game that has a Tai Chi character on their fighting roster, it's always like striking because that's how video games are. And in my mind, that's that's just how I pictured Tai Chi. And it, it blew my mind that it was grappling, first of all. And then I throw a front kick at the guy and he catches the front kick and sweeps me. And it's, it's um, you know, the golf swing takedown. You'll see um, wrestlers like Kerry Kola teaches this on, on his channel. Uh, it's, it's not a super well-known wrestling takedown. But it's become one of my favorites. You know, it's a technique you'll see a lot of Sanda fighters. It's very popular in Sanda, Chinese uh, kickboxing, basically, that allows throws and takedowns as well. And, you know, since this old man did this to me, I'm like, dang, I got to learn that. I need to learn this move. It's become one of my favorite moves as well. Also one of my favorite guard passes. Like, um, if somebody's on the ground already and you can get a hold of their ankle, you do the same movement. Essentially, you move them to, the, to the side and you can shoot right over into knee on belly position. Mm. And um, anyway, I, I learned a tremendous amount from this old guy. And so he, he beats me up and throws me on the ground a lot. And eventually I'm like, okay, I'm sick of getting thrown on the ground. This sucks. Training without mats is terrible. And again, when I tell this story, people are like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Because I think, first of all, they're picturing... The Tai Chi is magic, and um, Tai Chi Twin is not magic. 
Like they're, they're basically, they're, they're a bunch of different styles of Tai Chi, but it basically comes down to two schools. Tai Chi Twin, which is the, the unarmed form. Twin is fist in, in, in Chinese, but fist doesn't mean punching. It just means that it's a, it's a hand-to-hand combat system. And then there's Tai Chi Jin, the sword style, which is sword fighting. I know it's not BS because it's you. Like uh, you're not, I don't. You're not the type of guy to like uh, lie about that kind of stuff. Um, so it's very inspiring, actually, to hear that an 80 year old man could move like that, and not only move like that, but could even fight. So yeah. essentially, I want to be that guy in in like in about 40 years. <laughs> yeah, man. What was so amazing about this experience to me it was like, at this point, I was I was feeling like. Uh, feeling like giving up on martial arts in, in, in a big way. I was like, man, I, I, I'm not really accomplishing what I want to accomplish. And then I meet this guy and this was one of the most ins- inspiring instances of my life, especially when I asked him afterward, how long did it take you to master Tai Chi? And he starts laughing, very jovial guy, a funny dude. And he says, oh, about 80 years took me 80 years to master Tai Chi. I'm like, wait, you're 80 years old. And he's like, exactly, exactly. It takes a lifetime is what he's saying. Essentially, just don't give up. Just keep doing it every day. I'm like, well, how often do you train? How many hours a day do you train? And he laughs even more. He's like, I train an hour a day between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. Then I go to work. Like this guy was still working. He wasn't retired. He was, he was a, a chauffeur, like a professional chauffeur for the guy who owned the vinegar factory. And I was like, man, this is so strange because, again, in America, by the, by the age of 80, people are retired, living in a nursing home. They're not, they're not physical, but they're also not working either. But this guy, he didn't give up on life at all. And I think a, a, lot, of, um, a lot of Americans give up on life early. For example, a lot of people stop doing sports when they finish high school. And then even more people give up on sports when they finish college. And after college, you, you, don't have, you don't have venues to compete in sports anymore. You can't just, I mean, sometimes you might have a pickup game of basketball with your friends. But other than that, eh, there's no wrestling team to join. There's no, there's no lacrosse team. There's no football team. And so people just sort of give up and go to work and grow a gut and slowly wait to die but what this old man taught me is you don't have to you don't have to slowly wait to die you can you can get out there and train every day and and training a little bit every day consistently is much more important than trying to cram a lot in at once 